Okay, I'm gonna introduce you to one of my favorite lab tips, 80% glycerol. It pipettes almost like water, as opposed to if you try to pipette just pure glycerol, it is a glompy mess. Eek. Okay, 80% glycerol though is a totally different story. And it's really, really fun to make. So what I do is instead of trying to kind of measure out with like serological pipettes or something glycerol, I just go ahead and use a graduated cylinder, but I add water before I add the glycerol. And that way I don't get the glycerol sticking to the graduated cylinder. So I have, I'm gonna make 80% glycerol and so I have 20 mils of water and I'm gonna fill it to 100 with the glycerol. And so glycerol it often comes in these giant, giant bottles. And so I transferred it to something that's easier to pour in because what I wanna do is I wanna pour it carefully into the center of the liquid without getting it on the walls, especially not on the walls up here because then it's gonna make it really hard to measure. So I'm just gonna pour it directly into the center, trying to avoid the walls. And then I'm gonna slow down when I get close so that I just go so the bottom of the meniscus is right on that 100 mil line. Okay, and now comes the best part. And so now you get to take your parafilm, parafilm over the top. So this is like one of the best ways to mix anything is just to parafilm over the top and mix it up. So you can see that you're mixing it really well and that it's starting to viscous. So you wanna do this quickly before the glycerol like settles on things. Okay, Alice, your turn. Beautiful, 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 so beautiful. Cool. Okay, so now because it is 80% glycerol and not 100% glycerol, we can actually just go ahead and vacuum filter it just like normal and it won't be too bad. So. Let's go ahead and set up the vacuum filter. Okay, so stick a little of the liquid on the vacuum filter before you go to use it and make sure that the, it, it, yeah, okay. It's not good to have the vacuum on when it's like totally dry, but now turn the vacuum on and you just wanna go and look and see that stuff is coming through and that you don't hear really loud noises indicating that the seal is not on there. Stuff is coming through. Okay, stuff's coming through. Okay, go pour it all in. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah, I mean like it filtered a little slower than a nor other solution, but you can, it'll definitely filter through if you give it, if you give it time. And so we'll just give it a minute and then we can actually go and add it to our purified protein. And when we purify protein, when we go and we want to freeze the protein, we don't want ice crystals to form in our protein. And so when we add the glycerol, it serves as a cryoprotectant, so an antifreeze. And that way it makes it so that the water molecules can't hook up and form ice because when they form ice, then they expand and we don't want the water to expand in our protein and then hurt our protein, which would be really sad. And so by adding the 80% glycerol, well, we're gonna add it to a final of 10% glycerol. And the 10% glycerol is going to basically protect our protein so that the ice crystals don't form in it. And we're gonna flash freeze it in liquid nitrogen so that the water molecules don't have time to hook up, even if they could. And so, we will add the 80% glycerol to 10% glycerol, so it'll be an eight-fold dilution, and so we'll take the volume of our protein, our nice purified protein, and we will divide that by seven, and then that'll give it, like, so then if we add that volume to the seven parts protein, we'll have 80, go, we'll go down to 10%. So 10% glycerol. Okay, Alice, I think it's done. You can go ahead and turn off the vacuum. So now we can go ahead and Okay. And now do it you can do a test comparison. I'll have you try to like test out this versus the 100%. Oh yeah.
Look how easy that comes up. Nice. Beautiful. Cool, cool. Okay, now try the 100%. Get a new pipette yeah. too. Okay. Let's see. Oh, what a mess. Oh, what a mess, oh, indeed. Man. It's like impossible, <laughs> undoable. <laughs> yes. So 80% glycerol is the way to go, guys. For the win. <laughs> so when you add the glycerol to your protein, it will dilute your protein a little and it will dilute the buffer a little. And so if you want the buffer concentrations to be exactly something, you're going to want to account for that in your calculations when you're doing things. So you have higher concentrations in your buffer components before you add the glycerol. And I typically don't worry about that because it's just a small volume. When I'm freezing my protein and I'm going to use my protein in a much larger volume, so I'm not really too worried about the buffer that the protein is frozen in right that minute being a little diluted by the glycerol. But by doing an 80% solution instead of 50%, so 50% is even less viscous, but then you're having more water or you can even prepare the glycerol in the buffer if you want and that way you have even less of the dilution but again this isn't something that i normally even worry about but you do just keep that in mind when you're doing it and by having the 80 percent though we're able to add less than if we were adding 50 percent even though the 50 percent is going to pipette a little easier we are diluting it less and we are basically avoiding though having to pipette the really viscous glycerol and so some people will do like weigh out some glycerol but then you still have to deal with the transferring of it some people cut the pipette tips but then it still like gets stuck in the pipette tip and you have to worry about whether that affects the actual volume that you're doing so i just go with 80 percent glycerol and it works so yay